What is up, everybody? Ren Fail here, and I'm back on the road in Dragon's Dogma 2, heading out of town. And today, I want to talk about some of the things that the second game does so much better than the first game, and some of the things that really make this game fun. Like, I didn't have that much fun in the first game. Like, I and arguably, I didn't play it 12 years ago when it came out. I came and played Dark Arisen a few months back. Um, when it was starting to like all the press was starting to ramp up for Dragon's Dogma 2 which was when I came back and some of the things that really annoyed me about the first game were like the jank with the the companions and the AI and stuff um, and that's largely been eliminated in this in this uh, sequel it was really cool I watched um, Co Carnage did like another final thoughts video last night that I saw which kind of inspired me to want to make this because he was talking about how he did like 70 hours in total um, had a great time playing the game. It's one of the best games he's played in a long time for the action combat, the action combat genre. Uh, but he talked about, despite the fact that he loved the game and he had a great time, you know, the story was mid. There is still some issues. Uh, there are, excuse me, still some issues with the 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 pawns around cliff edges, and the lack of diversity amongst the mob types. Those are some of the things that he pointed out as flaws in the game, and the same things that I've pointed out in a couple of different episodes. But the things he praised were things like the pawns being far more responsive in this game. And I can confer that, which is one of the main reasons that I've enjoyed this one far more than the sequel, is that overall the pawns feel like actual companions now with all the different commands you've got. Like, if I tell them, like, go out there and do stuff, if that is what you wish, Arisen, they're going to take off ahead of me. And assume that I follow. They're not going to go too far. They will wait for me. But generally speaking, they will head out in front of me and they'll be looking for enemies and things to do. And if I tell them to wait, then they'll hold in place and I can go off and explore and, and do something over here and, and see if I can't pull mobs back to them. And then I can tell wait. them to come to me. Don't leave me here, Arisen. And then they'll turn around and run up the hill and come back to me. Um, and then you can tell them that you want them to help you as you're running through the wilderness. Um, and these do different things when you're in combat too, but if you tell them to help, you know, they're going to go loot, uh, you know, harvestables that they find along the way, um, and generally buff me and do things like that. So it's, it's very much improved compared to the first game when it comes to the AI for the, um, for the pawns and that's just normal that's technology getting better as the time is going because it's probably and if you take Material development time into consideration um we're looking at more like 15 years between the first iteration of programming and the second iteration of programming that they've done in terms of the tier system of, of just this game having access to much better tech the only issues that i've seen with pawns have been occasionally around the edges of cliffs which is what everyone else is complaining about as well um they will sometimes have issues mostly when it comes to being in combat um, when they're trying to position themselves for combat they will do crazy stuff and sometimes eat themselves off cliffs I don't know if I can replicate it here um, let's see if I can I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get him from here or not nah, he's too far away yeah I might have to go down um so apart from that, the pawns, um, you know, the, the pawns feel really good, and they're much improved compared to the first game. The other thing that I really love is that the combat in the first game, specifically with the archer, um, you had to do all this manual aiming. You don't have to do any of that in this game. It's all just basically auto-targeting, unless you're talking your spells and stuff. So um, in this case, like, let's go up here and, like, target this guy. Um, you know, we can have our targeting, which right now we're doing a wide shot. We'll go to a tight shot here. We'll look for some more mobs. But the one thing I love about the targeting is in the first game, when I wanted to do targeting as a mage, a sorcerer, or a magic archer, like what we were just doing here, um, the targeting was very slow and lethargic, and it felt very kind of clunky. Here... It's very snappy, so if I hit the button and I've got a mob in range, it's immediately targeting things like that. And I can do an ability like this one, and we focus in. Like, it just feels much more responsive and quick in terms of combat. And that's something that the first game was definitely lacking, because it felt way more, like, just kind of slow, if that makes sense. Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> so, 
So uh, pawns are more responsive. The combat is more responsive. The target locking is more responsive. It's all just quicker and better. So I think that's something that for me feels... I, you know, it's just I have a hard time playing games that feel slow, if that makes sense. Um, and so having something like this where everything is happening really quickly, like this, I mean, we can actually just do this. Quick fire here. A little bit of explosion. So, I mean, all of this just feels very, very good. So in terms of the fluidity of gameplay... I have nothing to complain about in Dragon's Dogma 2, especially when you compare it to the first game, which often I was... I remember the big thing about the aiming as, a, as, a, as an archer in the first game. Because I'm playing with a controller, it was like it was, it was just absolutely not fun trying to aim a bow with a controller. It was okay with mouse and keyboard um, trying to get your... You know, it was much better aiming with the mouse, but on the controller it felt crappy in the first game. And in this one, it feels much better because you've got the auto-targeting... Um, if you're choosing to just do it that way, you have to be close enough for the auto targeting to kick in. But as long as you're facing a mob, I'll show you here in a second what that looks like. Um, so it's here I'm facing him, and I can choose to just mash my. So you see I'm facing, and it's got the red target. So it's literally my bow shots are automatically tracking, and that's great. Or if I want to, I can come in here and choose to manually target like that. Of course, they're all dead now quick commercial break everyone to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time really appreciate the support all you got to do is join as a member you get access to private videos you can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see and beyond that don't forget we're multi-streaming over on twitch now so you can support over there as well thanks so much to everybody let's get back to the video at hand so all that feels very, very good. The other thing that I love in this game compared to the first game is the camp system where we can do a couple of different things here. One is that we can rest. So as you go adventuring, um, your health, you know, like your max health goes down. It's like the wear and tear of you being out in the field away from the comfort of an inn or a bed. And you can actually make camps um, using these camp kits. Now the cool thing about camp kits is um, when you use them, you can just keep reusing them unless you get interrupted. Um, if you get interrupted and attacked in the middle of the night, it will burn up the camp kit. But otherwise, um, you can use these camp kits in the field. And what it will do is it will allow you to, uh, first and foremost, if you have any food, you can cook. And you can get a, a variety of buffs here, you'll notice. So we'll use an aged scrag of beast. And what that means is that when you wake up, you're going to have stat bonuses um, based on... Um, I'm going to hold the skip based on whatever meat you used to craft. Now, here they're going to say, hey, let's go to sleep. So we can go here, and we could choose to change our skills. If we wanted to change our skills here, we could, or we can rest till night, or rest till morning, depending on if you have any quests that you want to actively. Like, some things you can only do at night, some things you can only do at day. Some enemies can only be found at night. Some enemies can only be found during the day. Generally speaking, night is far more dangerous, and you can't see squat. So let's just go ahead and rest till nightfall so you can see what nightfall looks like. Because that's the other thing that I felt this game did very much better than the first one. That was really bad grammar, by the way. Uh, it did far more better, whatever, um, was the lantern system. And and because here, not only do you have your lantern on your hip, and you still need lantern oil like in the first game, but in this game you can actually craft. Um, if you go into your items, you can go in and you can actually craft your own i have to scroll down and find it uh, 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 uh come on where's it at so many different versions of dried lantern oil so you can craft your own lantern oil out of all these bits and pieces that you find in the world um which is really cool and the lanterns work really really well and i like the fact that your companions also have lanterns that they use so it helps for wandering around the night is a balm to the battle -weary Look at that view of the city at night. Very subtle with the torches and everything else and the lantern light. Um, and darkness is genuinely dark um, and dangerous. Like, let's let's just kind of move out here along the road and you'll very quickly find that we can't see squat. I mean, I can see my bow, but you really do need to use a lantern if you're going to be out adventuring in the wild. And oh my god, there's a bad guy right there. Oh, there's more than bad guys. Let's go ahead and do this. There we go. Little little lightning for everybody. 
little zappy zap. Gotta love it. And then their little healing ray of light up above, which helps for a little bit. Um, so, you know, I feel like the darkness is way more interactive in the second game. The combat is way more reactive. It's way more responsive. The AI for the pawns is way better. Um, the pawns overall are very, very reactive and do what they're supposed to do. And they do what you ask them to do, I'd say, like 95% of the time. And very rarely, yes, you will have issues with them yeeting themselves off cliffs, but it doesn't happen too often. So those are some of the things that I really like in the second game compared to the first game. These are things that I think Dragon's Dogma 2 does way better in the sequel than they did in the first game. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What are some of the things that you think Dragon's Dogma 2 does better than the first game? Drop those down in the comments below. And as always, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update if you're new here. Don't forget daily streams happen here and on oh, Twitch. And there's a Discord and a Patreon for those of you who want to go above and beyond and get involved with our community. So hopefully we'll see you there as well. And uh, until next time, everybody, stay safe and happy gaming.